Today we're going to be talking about black autom automobile designers. We're going to start off with McKinley Thompson, first African-American automotive designer. Uh, he was born uh, November 8, 1922 in New York City. Uh, he was one of the first, one of the first African Americans to design automobiles, trucks, and tractors for major automobile manufacturers such as Ford Motor Company. Uh, we go to this website. Uh, Black auto designers lead the way at General Motors and Chrysler. At the 2010 New York Auto Show, Ed Welburn, that's him on the left, from General Motors, chief automobile designer, sat behind his creations. He is. To sell millions of cars, both General Motors and Chrysler LLC must make buyers say wow. As it happens, two black automobile designers control the destiny of these troubled American automakers. Pennsylvania-born Wellburn became vice president, that's him, for General Motors Design North America in 2003. Two years later, he was named General Motors vice president. Of global design and became the first person to lead all of the company global design centers. New Yorker by the name of Ralph Gills is the vice president for design at Chrysler. That's Ralph Gills. First black auto designer revolutionized General Motors. Top African Americans in the auto industry. Here again, we have Ed Welburn, Vice President of Global Design for General Motors. In 2003, Ed Welburn was announced as the sixth design chief in GM's 95 year history. He's Black designers add flair to new car models. Industry professional says it's about talent and hard work. Earl Lucas is one of a handful of black car designers in the industry, but his role in the design of the Ford Motor Company's 2010 Taurus illustrates that something major is happening. Black car designers are being tapped to handle critical auto products and in the famous words of Martha Stewart, that's a good thing. Lucas designed the exterior body of the reborn Taurus, judging from accolades received at the 2009 North American International Auto Show. The vehicle is off to a promising start. When you look at the Taurus, it's gorgeous, one analyst says. It's the complete package. I asked Lucas to explain why automakers appear to be putting more black designers at the forefront of major design products. It is about talent and hard work, he said. And of course, there's that other factor. African Americans really have a sense of style, he said, pointing to a shiny red Taurus rotating on display at the auto show. So let's see a little bit more about Earl Lucas. And let's watch this video. Well, obviously, when you look at the 2010 Ford Taurus, I mean, there's a lot of muscular influences on the car. Uh, you will note uh, there's a power dome, uh, a really beautiful section that blends the hood to the fender, and also uh, a new prominent grille. So we were trying to go for a much more athletic, a much more fashionable car uh, that truly turned heads uh, when people saw it. Designers always have the, uh, the idea that they're going to design for themselves. Or oh, this car, I'm designing for Earl. But really what we wanted to do is back away from some of that. We wanted to create a car that would speak to Joe America. We wanted a car that would speak to a customer that wanted a fashionable sedan, uh, a car that uh, would be noticed in the marketplace. Here's some more about uh, Ed Welburn. And these are more of the uh, black auto designers and the cars which they have designed. That's Welburn and the Corvette concept. He shows off the Buick Belite concept. That's Ed Welburn again. 2003 concept. That's uh, Mr. Giles. And that's the uh, 2009 Dodge Ram. He attended Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles by being awarded one of the 
five scholarships in a national design competition called From Dream to Drawing Board 2, sponsored by Motor Trend Magazine in September of 1953. That's one of the uh, cars that he designed, vehicles. In 1962, Mr. Thompson received several awards for his civic work, including the Ford Motor Company Citizen of the Year Award. In August of 1976, he became the manager of the Appearance Development and Feasibility Design Modeling Department at the Ford Motor Company Design Center in Dearborn, Michigan. But once again, I do this for quite a number of reasons. One of them is to dispel a lot of the mythology that, that's out there. And uh, my main motivation for doing all of these types of videos has come from uh, black people, actually, who have made the assumption because they haven't been told differently that black people are not as involved as they actually are, as we actually are in many of the technologies that exist. And they allow other people who are Eurocentrists, who do not know anything, they have no facts, they have no information, they have no names, they have no data, they have nothing whatsoever. They just assume. Because when you are majority, when you are part of a majority group in a society, it's very easy to assume, especially if you're not told differently, that those who are of that majority group or other groups are the ones responsible for things that they actually are not responsible for. So what I do is I challenge that with data. I challenge that with facts. I challenge that with irrefutable truth, facts, and evidence, which is incontrovertible because, uh, you know, and, and of course, there's always going to be detractors. And on this video, too, I'm expecting it. It's par for the course. But that's why I give you the sources, I give you the names, I give you the data, I give you the information, I give you the accolades within the industry, and I can go on and on and on, whether we're talking about the uh, uh, computer industry, the satellite technology, electronics, uh, uh, automotive design, engineering, architecture, uh, medicine, it doesn't matter what it is. You're going to find blacks on the forefront of all of these fields and technologies. I'm not saying that we lead anything, because clearly... The, uh, uh, it is it is very clear, crystal clear, and it is beyond debate or dispute or refute that it is the uh, white people that basically are on the forefront of most things in society. I mean, as a group. I mean, just as a whole. As a whole. Uh, and I, I don't like the way I put that. Let me rephrase that. I'm not going to say that white people are on the forefront of most things in society, but overall, hands down, um, they're on top as a group. Be that as it may, you know, we can accept that because truth is truth. That's that's not that's a, that's a no brainer. There's no argument there, but to suggest that uh, and, and and which is often done. And like I said, I've seen black people do that as well as uh, non-black people. But to suggest that African Americans are not a prominent figure in any of these industries is 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 wrong, and, and it's uh, easily disproven and easily dispelled with truth and facts. Okay, not only being a prominent figure, but oftentimes being the pioneer of many of the industries that. Uh, we all benefit from today. And it's very interesting to look at the little racists who don't know anything, always make presumptions about the cell phone and the uh, personal computer and the laptop and the uh, technologies and automobiles and engineering and architecture, medicine, everything else, and just assume that this is all the white man's uh, science, the white man's medicine, the white man's uh, technology, and that is absolutely positively not true. Okay, now as a proud American, I can uh, take, a, take, take credit for the fact that uh, Americans have led the way and do lead the way as a, as, as a nation uh, overall for uh, bringing the world into the 20th century and bringing it to where we are now. And hopefully that will continue for quite some time. There are quite a lot of reasons for that. But I also have to acknowledge that America is a melting pot. And there are quite a number of people of other races who are, are not necessarily uh, what you would call your typical native-born Americans who have been major contributors to the fact that America is what it is. And one of the reasons America has uh, grown and developed as much as it has is because it has, pro it has benefited from a, a collaboration of minds that have come together in this melting pot that is called North America from all over the world. You know, we have some of the best and the brightest from all over the world who do come to America and help and help them and have helped America to grow and to expand to what it is.